you're watching Celtic Fans TV, please don't forget to click subscribe below. <laughs>
we built a lot through the middle and that's when O'Reilly and Bernardo really shone mm. I'm quite amazed as well to get a, a goal for a corner again that's mm. that's too, I, know, I know it's a rebound but yeah, still yeah. from a second I'll take it absolutely <laughs> absolutely and I thought um, Kyogo to his credit again just what a goal to start the second half on, on his weaker left foot amazing again just knows how to play against Rangers I thought he had a quiet first half maybe one moment in the first half with the ball came out over Goldson's head and he went in but I think Goldson's physical presence behind him just put him off enough to, to take on the shot but you know that second half he just gets the ball from O'Reilly brilliant through the ball from O'Reilly and, and the finish is, is, is worthy to win win a game of this magnitude the, the only disappointing thing maybe you could say as well in the second half is that we didn't maybe kill the game off better mm-hmm. because when, we, when Balogun gets sent off you're thinking that's a centre half you see Lundstrom drop back to centre back and now you're thinking that, that midfield area is just going to be overloaded with Celtic to an extent it was we kept possession we didn't look in danger at anything but there's always a risk when you play against somebody like James Tavernier as as Martin said he's he's deadly from, from a set piece so you know we got one free kick hit pretty poor and then they got that other free kick and you know, we scored a free kick here before so unfortunately I just kind of made the last 10 minutes really nervy and and you know the fans like so much added time so much added time eight minutes and then there was in those eight minutes there was injuries and stuff so it just felt like forever but again you've got to credit the the mentality of the team the, the discipline just because it was just a, it was a basketball game at the end wasn't it like mm. throw-ins Rangers at Conor Goldson was just putting the ball trying to win the headers and it just became all tactics just went out the yeah, window at the end and it came yeah. scrapping just came down to, to probably who wanted it more in the end mm. and I think you know 2-1 kind of does Rangers a bit of credit but I'm not saying we deserve to win 4-5-0 but the way we managed the game throughout as Martin says we were a better team and we, we deserved to win the game Aye, we did deserve to win it Martin I thought Callum McGregor who Darren mentions there was absolutely phenomenal I thought he dragged the team kicking and screaming almost to win that at the time the second half where I think it's Sterling that's on the ball and he's driving through midfield it's late in the game McGregor must be tired he would not let him go he, 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 he stayed for pace with him for 20-25 yards won it back I thought that summed up his whole performance. He was everywhere in the first half. He was getting on it, driving forward, beating players, um, eliminating Rangers midfield players. I thought he was brilliant all afternoon. I thought one of the things I noticed about him today when there was breaks in play, he was very, very vocal. And you could see it, not just you know, because he's, he's no one that shouts and screams, but you could see it with his body and his pointing and he's, he's dictating to players. And you could see the players listening as well, because sometimes when you're on the field, the play was an instant late on when Taylor's giving Mikey Johnson a, a hard time. And Mikey Johnson, you can tell, was a wee bit like... You know, who do you think you are speaking to me like that, that type of thing. But when Carl McGregor was talking, you could tell the players were all attentive, they're all listening to what he was saying, mm. and he showed some real leadership qualities. He finds energy sometimes. I mean, again, he's one of those that's came under a bit of criticism because he's not playing those perfect passes, he's not scoring the goals, mm. and sometimes he's had to dig deep to cover for those round about him who've been underperforming. But today, I just thought his energy levels were superb. You know, you've seen the likes of Lundstrom who got taken off. Uh, Cantwell again who got taken off. You've seen that they were kind of deflated and their heads were down, although they, were, they still had that work ethic they were trying. They just didn't have that extra bit of um, energy that Cal McGregor brings. He was all over the pitch, and as I say, it wasn't just his individual performance, it was how he got the best out of players around the bounty today that was really, really impressed by. And I thought O'Reilly as well. I know Dan talked about a lot of the play going through the middle. I thought, you know, Bernardo was good, O'Reilly was good, obviously McGregor was good, and we didn't necessarily have to rely in the woods. At times, early in the game, we were getting the ball out wide, but it was just to stretch it, wasn't it, and create Aye. a bit of space in the middle. And I thought at times that worked. Maeda, Still looks like he's, he's working his way back, and you know, a lot of times he, he didn't win the ball, but he worked hard, he worked tirelessly. And, and I, I do think that Palmer at times looked really, really dangerous. You wanted him to get the ball when he got the ball, you thought, I don't know if he's going inside or outside, I don't know if he's going to shoot, he's going to pass. I thought for spells in the first half he was very good, but he faded in the game. Yeah. It was interesting to see that the, the top three got changed, you know, the, the whole top yeah, three, yeah. not really sure it made a difference, a positive difference. Yeah, I don't think so. But maybe the right thing to do is just to give us a bit more a bit more energy. Yeah. Dan, the winning goal, you mentioned it briefly, but. <laughs> Kyogo's again coming for a bit of stick he's been going through bad form no doubt about that but I said doubt him at your peril and in these big games he's he's done it time and time again against Rangers that goal today we'll, we'll talk about that for decades that goal aye especially because it's a, a winning goal as well I mean maybe if it was 2-3-0 you would always just count it as Kyogo doing what he normally does but now when you look back on it one, two, five years from now you look at it as that's the winning goal and in a big game that's ultimately could decide where the title goes so again massive credit to him and like he says he has been so long confidence we, we spoke about it at, at Dundee when he missed a really big chance but you know, that's what great strikers do they go through bad spells as, as Martin said at the start teams go through bad spells players go through bad spells but you know there's a player in there I don't like football cliches but there is one that say you don't become a bad player overnight mm. you see Kyogo last season breaking all these records and getting played of the year it's not an accident he does that for a reason 
obviously he's not firing all cylinders this season. You can blame his confidence or you can blame the system. That's fine. But ultimately, in a game like that, where the game's open and he's going to get chances, he's going to get space, which he doesn't usually get against other teams, you know, give him that half yard, they will score just as well. I thought um, it's going to do him really good for his confidence. But ultimately, going forward, what, how many goals on the 10? Something like 10. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important as well that if he if he doesn't score for a few games as well, we don't get carried away and put him yeah. back into this bracket that he's not a bad, pl- a, a good player anymore yeah. because we can be quite cynical at times as Celtic fans. Mm. If someone has a one good game, they're the best player in the world. And if somebody has a bad game, uh, sorry, if they have a good game, they're the best player in the world. Right. If they have a bad game, they're the worst player in the world. Yeah. It's important not to think about that. You need to take it in context. Over a season, yeah. he scored two really uh, important goals in the Champions League. Ultimately, getting on from that doesn't really matter, but. He's shown time and time again that he's a big, big game player. Aye, absolutely. I'll give you another football cliche. It was a goal worthy of winning any match. Martin, absolutely brilliant. Um, man of the match today, so many contenders. McGregor obviously gets the sponsor man of the match. Um, I thought, I agree, the, the centre-halves were really good. Scales, Navrotsky when he came on, Welsh until he went off injured. Um, Taylor, Greg Taylor stood up really well. O'Reilly in the second half I thought was tremendous. Bernardo as well gets the goal. Um, so many contenders. Uh, can I just quickly see on Kyogo? So a few us touched base on this, didn't we, after the match? But there was a comment made by Chris Boyd. I know we're not here to talk about Chris Boyd or Rangers, we're here to talk about Celtic. But Chris Boyd made a very, very ignorant comment. I'm sure he doesn't watch Celtic fans TV, right? But, but, but we do <laughs> Certainly have. Certainly not the night. We do, but, <laughs> aye, we do have a reasonably big audience. So, you know, for anybody who's watching, whether you're a Celtic fan or not, Chris Boyd's comment during the week was out of order. Mm-hmm. Um, it was typical Chris Boyd. It was inaccurate. It was factually wrong. And for those that didn't hear it, he, he, he paid reference to the Shanklin goal, which was an excellent finish, and said Kyogo couldn't score a goal like that. <laughs> Kyogo scored many goals like that. You scored know, a he, better one today. Uh, Aye, <laughs> and, and he scored better ones in the past as well. You know, if you look at the number of goals he scored for Celtic and, and the variety and the type of goals that he scored as well, he's a sensational striker. And I, I mean, he said it at the time, and I listened to him saying it live. He was sitting with, with Neil Lennon and Neil Lennon's face at the time, but I thought to myself, it's not even correct. It's, mm. a, it's a stupid, stupid comment to make. And in the context of what they were talking about, Hibs and Hearts, why he was talking about Kyogo, I have no idea. He's trying to dig in, Narrow-mindedness to the extreme, right? Uh, obsessed with Celtic, so he is. So, Chris Boyd, I hope this gets back to you, right? I hope somebody <laughs> tells you what you're talking about today, right? You are an absolute idiot. And what a stupid comment. Came back and to Kyo- him, didn't Kyogo's it? goal was ten times better than Shanklin's goal. In the context of that game, the magnitude of that game, the importance of it, the pressure it's on Kyogo after the form he's been in, sensational. Mm-hmm. What a player he is, right? And yes, he's having a dip in form, but he's proven mm-hmm. during his time in Celtic what an asset he is for us. I couldn't be more happy for him today. And the first person I thought about when the ball hit the back of the head was Chris Boyd. <laughs> you know, just ignorance. And how he's how he gets a job in Sky Sports, I have no idea with comments like that. Um, so yeah, I agree with you, Pollock. Man of match could have been a, a wide range of players. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think I agree with you that Cal McGregor, not just for his play, but just for his, his leadership qualities that he showed today. For, for, I know he got the man of match with sponsors. For me, it would be Cal McGregor, definitely. Yeah. Darren, man of um, match. Just because you both said McGregor, I'll say O'Reilly, just to change things up a wee bit. Um, but the whole midfield three as, as a team were just superb today. So, um, a, a unsung hero, Bernardo, two, two, goals in, uh, two goals in two games. Mm. Brilliant for him. Maybe that's, I know Hitati is obviously going to come back now, but he's done his, his chance in the team in the world are good but yeah. O'Reilly again just showing why he deserves to be looked at by teams like Inter Milan and, mm-hmm. and these Premier League teams biggest game of the, well, the, one of the four biggest games of the season and he's, he's come up trumps today so O'Reilly for me Aye, brilliant there you go that's it for full time reaction we'll see you in the pub for post-match pint thank you <laughs>